Embryogenesis proceeds through a series of complex events. For example, during Drosophila development, the first 13 nuclear divisions are synchronous and are marked by a rapid cell cycle that goes directly from S phase to mitosis back to S phase again without any obvious gap phases. At cycle 14, also referred to as the midblastula transition or MBT, S phase is significantly lengthened and the first G2 phase is introduced. And unlike the rapid and synchronous cycles before the MBT, the cycles after the MBT are significantly slower and progress asynchronously. But what controls the timing of this cell cycle progression? And is it one regulator? Or does this change with development? In the March 9th issue of the Journal of Cell Biology, a group at UCSF investigated the role that mitotic cyclins play in controlling cell cycle progression in the early Drosophila embryo. Here is Dr. Patrick O'Farrell, who was the senior investigator of the study. An accumulation of cyclins is ordinarily thought to be a major timing process in the cell cycle. It's generally stated that the cyclins rise to a threshold level, at which point they induce mitosis. And in this work, we were able to use RNAi to eliminate accumulation of the cyclin. There are three mitotic cyclins in Drosophila cyclin A, B, and B3. The group did both individual and pairwise knockdowns of these cyclins to investigate what role these cyclins played in timing cell cycle progression. The authors found that interphase was only modestly longer, and although mitotic phenotypes varied depending on which cyclins were knocked down, they still entered into mitosis. The group further tested the importance of cyclin levels in directly regulating entry into mitosis. Here's first author of the study, Dr. Mark McClelland, to explain what they did. So what we did was we wanted to reduce the embryo to one copy of cyclin and compare that to an embryo that was uh, functioning on two copies of cyclin B. And the prediction here would be that if we reduce the level of cyclin by, by twofold, that we should get delays of entry into mitosis by twofold. The investigators found that when there was a half gene dose of cyclin B and they knocked down cyclins A and B3, interphase was not prolonged and the cells still attempted mitosis. What we found was that they tried to do mitosis in that they separated their centrosomes and they began to condense their, their nucleus, but they weren't able to do nuclear division. In fact, they re re receded out of mitosis um, and then they, they tried to do another mitosis and about the uh, the time of, of another cell cycle. This led the group to believe that in early divisions, it was something else that was triggering mitosis. What this suggested to us is that indeed cyclin synthesis isn't really the thing which is allowing you to go into mitosis. And so what really left us with was the question, if it's not cyclin accumulation, then what is it? In a new study published in the October 5th issue of the Journal of Cell Biology, the group explored whether S phase may play a role in timing the early cycles. Here's Principal Investigator Patrick O'Farrell again. There was previous work in the field that suggested that it might uh, control the timing of entry into mitosis, but it hadn't been directly tested. What was needed was uh, an approach where you could just eliminate S phase. The method they used to delete S phase was to inject into the embryo a protein called geminin, which inhibits the formation of pre-replication complexes, or PRCs. If there were no PRCs formed, there would be no uh, replication complexes formed at all and, and no S phase, and thereby we could delete S phase. So what happens when you delete S phase? Here, in this video, you can see that when the injected control buffer into Drosophila embryos expressing YFP-PCNA, distinct foci become evident. These YFP PCNA foci are a marker for sites of DNA replication. However, this was not the case when they injected geminin into these embryos. What we basically did was to look to see whether geminin injection was truly inhibiting DNA replication. So when we injected geminin, essentially what we saw was that during interphase, these, these um, replication foci were no longer present. And this indicated to us that replication was indeed blocked after geminin. 
The group analyzed YFP PCNA to determine the effect on interphase length, and they found that when they deleted S phase, interphase was shorter. The group also looked at the effect on the behavior of centromeres and chromosomes using Drosophila co-expressing SID GFP and histone RFP. In control-injected embryos, mitosis proceeded as expected. Paired sister chromatids aligned during metaphase before going into anaphase. However, the group saw something different when geminin was injected into these embryos. So then we see these what we call singlet chromosomes. They're unreplicated chromosomes. And they can't really align in a bipolar spindle because they don't have the two attachment sites for the spindle fibers. What we see in this mitosis following an S phase deletion is the mitotic phase is prolonged, the chromosomes bounce around, and ultimately when they do escape and go on into anaphase, the chromosomes don't distribute properly. In contrast to its role in regulating cell cycle timing in the pre-MBT embryo, Deleting S phase did not affect the timing of cell cycle progression after the transition. We did the same kind of experiment we did in the earlier embryo where we injected geminin, and we looked specifically in what's called cell cycle 15. It's the cell cycle immediately after uh, the MBT. And when we injected the, the geminin, the embryo went on as if virtually nothing happened. When they went into that mitosis 15, and we looked at the behavior of the chromosomes, it was again what we had seen in the early embryo, that is, the chromosomes had replicated, so mitosis itself was slowed down, the chromosomes were misbehaved. Um, so experimentally, we could be sure that we had accomplished what we thought, that is, we had deleted S phase, um, but there was no effect on the timing of the process. The group believes that development is playing an important role in regulating cell cycle progression. In the early stages before the mid-blastula transition, S phase plays a role in timing mitotic progression. However, in the later stages after the MBT, a different regulator takes control. But this still leaves one obvious question. So I think one of the biggest uh, issues is that if S phase is a timer, what determines the length of S phase? To find out more about these two studies, including details about the mitotic phenotypes from the cyclin RNAi studies, or what role S phase plays at the mid blastula transition, please refer to the papers by McClellan et al. in the March 9th and October 5th issues of the Journal of Cell Biology.